Okay, this is conversation three, which apparently it's easy to confuse, conversation one and conversation three. I apologize to some of you who unexpectedly had to answer the self-introduction question because um, I told you in the review that you didn't have to answer that question. And then, uh, you know, I had conversation one the same day. So the questions got kind of, uh, the questions were not confused, just that question was included. So a few of you uh, did the self-introduction and one particular student was confused and didn't answer as well as the student could have. So they emailed me, don't worry, suffice to say, I, I'll consider that in your evaluation. I just finished doing the three classes for the freshmen, so yours are not ready yet anyway, but um, that was not a planned question. But you know, remember in an interview, a real interview, you're never gonna know the set of questions and they might skip questions or add questions. Um, when you get an unexpected question, a strange question, like you're being interviewed for Samsung and then they say, well, do you like to read? And you're like, yes. And they say, what was the last book that you read? Um, that's a typical kind of curveball question. It doesn't really have anything to do with working for Samsung Electronics, especially if you're some sort of software engineer or networking expert or, or marketing manager. So um, they usually do that just to see how you react, like if you can handle you know, ad adapt and if you can handle different situations. So some some students, I asked them, please introduce yourself. And they just, they were just like, oh, well, I introduced myself. And one student said, I introduced myself in conversation one. So I'm just going to tell you something different than last time. And I was like, okay, good. And after that one, I clued in. I was like, wait a second. This isn't conversation one. This is conversation three. So anyway, um, there are some similarities in the classes. You probably know that there's a few students who have taken both or taken conversation two. But like I said, <clears throat> the competition is higher. Um, you're supposed to be able to give me more in-depth analysis and be more descriptive, obviously. So I expect you to be able to handle curveballs too, even if it's my fault. Okay, but thank you for letting me know. One student emailed me shortly after uh, their interview when they realized or they wanted to let me know that that was uh, not what I had specified. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, moving on, the website has been updated. So on the website, it says um, what the topics are for the rest of the semester and the plan, okay? The cyber campus was always there, um, just but it doesn't have any information. On my website, the topics are there and they correspond to, of course, the chapter headings uh, in the remainder of the book. So um, just we're on chapter eight. We have five weeks left. So there's a couple weeks that are open there. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about presentations because I would like you to record yourself, do a presentation and record it and submit it to me uh, as your basically your other major, you know, grade uh, of the semester. It's the, um, the exam, the midterm interview, the final exam interview, and the presentation, which will um, contribute the most to your final uh, grade. The presentation is worth 20% of your grade and the final interview is worth 30, okay? So um, you need to do a good job of that. You don't need to do it yet. I'm just letting you know, it's due on the 25th. So that is uh, three weeks this Tuesday, as we say. So you can do it anytime, but you don't have to do it yet. I'm going to, next weekend, I'm going to record a lecture about presentations. Coincidentally though, this, this um, chapter that we're doing, chapter eight, is uh, about explaining how to do something. So, uh, there are going to be, like, it's going to be a spe specific example of, of how to do something, but I'm also going to give you information about topic, to topic choices. Um, it's 
how long it needs to be and you know what kinds of things are involved in um, submitting it and evaluating how you're going to be evaluated. Uh, so I would recommend not doing your presentation yet. Just wait one week. Um, take a break from your midterms and enjoy yourself. Uh, the coronavirus case is stable at least uh, and the weather is nice so um, you know enjoy yourself safely. Enjoy the nice weather before it gets too hot. I, I always dread. Um, I love May but as soon as we get to May I know July and August are coming which are my least favorite months in in Korea because of the humidity and the heat. So we're going to talk about those presentation details next week and uh, we will have a final exam review on week 14 and the other three weeks are the topics. So there will be 10 topics in the end for the exam. Um, there'll be 10 different topics for questions. So you'll be answering three out of the 10. Usually what I do, and this is um, going to be the same for the conversation one class, so I can't mess this up. Um, I'm gonna, from the first six topics, I'll take one question randomly from the midterm, uh, and then I'll take two questions from the last four. So you're gonna get three questions, one from the first half of the class and two from the second half of the class, and that's that'll be your final exam format, okay? And the grading is essentially the same as the midterm, just there's three questions instead of two, and of course, uh, it's worth more. So it has a bigger impact on your final grade. So um, this is called Step by Step, this chapter. And this is a common expression when you're gonna do a process. In English, we call it do it step by step. Take care of one thing, then another thing, and uh, do them separately, kind of. You have to complete one step before you go on to the next one, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, not everything is built like that, but certain things pretty much have to be. Like Lego, for example. Uh, when I was young, I was a big Lego maniac. If you skip the steps, then you're missing pieces and the, the thing doesn't, um, you can't get the pieces in if you skip the earlier steps. They don't fit, they're blocked by other pieces. So you usually build it from the, from the inside out. In any Lego you know, instruction booklet, they give you the steps. Building from the, the bottom to the top or the inside to the out, you, sometimes you flip it over and put things on the bottom. And that's a, an example of a step-by-step -step process. Um, if you don't complete the earlier steps, there is a, a risk of the later steps being affected by less development by the earlier steps. We talk about, you know, human development this way. That's, you know, that's part of being an adult is that you kind of have to go through the maturation process. Um, if you want to take, do things in really small, easy steps, we call them baby steps because uh, babies can't run. You have to crawl and then you have to walk and then you have to run. These are all basic things you probably say uh, in Korean or your, um, <clears throat> your first language, wherever you may be from. Um, the question that it asks here right away <clears throat> is a very open-ended question. What was your favorite toy when you were a child and do you still have this toy? Um, this is an easy way to choose something that you would uh, want to describe something that has that you built or something that you used or something that you made um, if it was assembled then it would be a good option they're actually they're talking about homemade toys in particular here so that's um, what it, you know it's emphasized if you get a store-bought toy that's already assembled and there's no steps to it then it's not a good choice but um, in the past People didn't buy as many of their toys. Um, these days, basically all of my children's toys are plastic. Some of them have steps and some of them don't. But uh, you know, in two generations in Korea and in Canada too, people went from basically 
making their own toys, um, parents making toys for children, and children as they grew, grew older making toys for themselves. This is a very positive experience and something that young kids miss out on. Um, when my son was young, I think I bought too many toys and it's expensive to buy toys and it's just piles of plastic and they get broken, you know, fairly easily. So um, I have two kids and my second child, uh, she has m many, much fewer store-bought toys. But these days we try to get creative. We do a lot of the, you know, paper making different um, shapes out of paper. Uh, I know that there's a Korean word for it too, but origami uh, in, in Japanese, making different animals and shapes, but just making, you know, whatever. We build things out of wood and, you know, we go outside and do gardening together. And all these things require you to do things in a certain way uh, and you get better results if you do them a certain way. Um, you don't have to talk about toys. You can talk about anything. You can talk about homemade anything. It'll probably work. Gardening is a good one. Um, I have a Jumal Nongjang, and uh, this, you know, April is uh, in Korea. You can start in March. I started planting certain things in March, but it's ongoing, you know, throughout April, and a few things are going to be planted this week and next week. And um, that's you. You got you first. First, you gotta go to the ground. You have to prepare the soil, right? It's just a patch of ground. It could be rocky, it could be covered in weeds, it could be low quality soil. So you've gotta dig that soil up. That's what I was doing this morning. Um, I planted my garden in March and my Jumal Nongjang, I should be saying this in, I should be saying this in English. I don't know why I'm saying it in Korean. But, <clears throat> um, but we don't really have a word for it. It's a hobby farm. You would call it a hobby farm, but it's smaller than a hobby farm. A Canadian hobby farm is like Obek Pyong. They're huge. A, then, and Koreans would be like, that's not a hobby, that's a, that's a you know, full-time job. That's, you're a farmer. But no, um, when I was in high school, my, my uh, employer, my summer job was working on a farm and uh, my employer had a hundred cows, but his job was, he was a high school teacher. He was a high school physics teacher, and he had a farm, which was thousands of pyong, thousands of pyong, a hundred cows on it. That's what he did after, before school, after school, on the weekend, and all summer. And he was a physics teacher. He was the head of the science department in my high school. And uh, his side job, his hobby farm, had 100 cows. I worked there for six summers. So anyway, Canadian culture is a little bit different, as everybody points out in Korea. There's not as much space. There's a lot of people around here. You can't just have 100 cows anywhere. There's, um, that would be a really uh, expensive endeavor for a Korean um, to do, and that would be their job. It wouldn't be a second in, um, job. So... <clears throat> First thing you have to do when you're planting, back to the planting thing, if you have a Jumal Nongjang, which is a weekend garden, I guess you can say, um, I think it's about 15 square meters, which is, I don't know how many pyong that is. Six pyong? Nine pyong? I haven't done the math. Um, I, know, I know room sizes, but it's hard for me to translate onto the ground. So I have this area, <clears throat> throw the rocks out, I take the weeds out, I dig it up, then I got to put fertilizer in it, spread around as uh, minerals so that things can grow better. And, and then I have to row, put things in rows using a hoe. And uh, you can use a homie, which is a small Korean one, or you can use a long one. I prefer the long one. And you drag the soil into heaps, into rows. And then uh, lots of Koreans cover them in plastic after that. And then you pin the plastic down. You make holes in the plastic. And then you take your plants and you put them there and you, you loosen up the roots and then you, you know, give them a nice deep um, push and when you're planting them into the soil and um, tighten up the soil around the roots and then give them a little drink of water and go home. If they require some kind of uh, lattice or, or you know, 
rod, some sticks or something for them to grow up. Then you have to stick the poles in the ground or build something for them to, if they're vines and they like to crawl up things, then you have to give them something to crawl up. Uh, and that's how you plant a garden. If you do a um, garden near your house, then obviously it's a little bit more complicated. You need pots and you have to mix the soil, you know, to the right, um, it has to have the right content in it and then you can grow things. So you can talk about that. Um, you're welcome to talk about other things that you're interested in. Hobbies are good examples of things that you can talk about uh, and explain to people. If you're into computers, you can explain to me how to do something on the computer. Um, website design or some kind of programming or executing some function using some kind of, you know, computer um, uh, platform, uh, doing something on the internet. Uh, that's anything is fine. Um, I've had people explain all kinds of things. Cooking is a common one if you want to tell me how to prepare some kind of food. You think up a recipe and you tell me what the ingredients are and then you have to go through the method. There's you know two parts to a recipe. There's the ingredients and there's the method. So you can tell me about a recipe. That's always a pretty safe one if you're good at cooking already and you know some recipes, you know. Um, if you're cooking something new, you probably read a recipe, but if you've cooked something many times, you might know the amounts and the order already um, and just do them. So you should be able to explain them to me, I think. Okay, so they've got all of these examples here. Here's a d good description from the textbook on page 90, right? <clears throat> I made these with my brother when I was a child. He made them by finding a good stick in the shape of a Y. Then we cut a piece of rubber from an old bicycle tire inner tube. We attached the piece of rubber to the stick with two rubber bands. We used them to shoot stones or folded pieces of paper. We never shot at birds. We just shot at empty cans on a fence or shot the stones onto the neighbor's roof. What are they talking about? Well, you have to tell me, it's not a guessing game. Right there, you, you're supposed to guess. Which object is it? Is it a paper airplane? Is it a hand puppet? Is it a paper crane? Is it a fishing pole? Is it, uh, that guy looks like a kite-shaped human being? Or is it a go-kart? Somebody had, somebody made a go-kart there. Or is it a slingshot? And the answer, of course, is B. It's a slingshot. It's the same weapon. Is it a weapon? Toy? Weapon? Uh, tool that um, Bart Simpson carries around in The Simpsons and uh, uses it to get into trouble. Um, yeah, you know, you can shoot things, you can shoot stones at anything. Obviously you can stu shoot stones at animals or cars or people, and that's really dangerous. So they said, yeah, no shooting at birds or people or, or things that could be broken. So that's the topic that's introduced in the book. Like I said, though, from the very beginning of the class, normally we would talk about this together uh, in class and have a little discussion. But since we've got this one way communication thing going, you have to read some of the stuff yourself, right? And I know it's weird, but just listening to me is not um, going to allow you to improve your speaking very much. So you've got to do some speaking. So we've got to figure out, we're going to have another Zoom meeting and um, not yet, don't worry, um, but before the presentations are due, <clears throat> probably um, on week 12, the week before the presentations are due. Um, that would be the, I'm thinking we'll have a Zoom meeting again, maybe on the 18th, we'll see. Undecided yet, but I, I need to figure out a way. If it's not a Zoom meeting on the 18th, then we're gonna do something else. I'm gonna get you to do some sort of speaking exercise. Uh, because you, there's not enough of it this semester. Your conversation, three students, and I think um, I'm speaking and you're not. So one thing I noticed in the interview um, was with some students, we were talking before and after the quiz, several students. And they just, I think some of you just want a chance to speak more. And uh, six minutes 
of being interviewed wasn't enough. And uh, so some, some of the interviews ended up being like 12 minutes or 14 minutes long. I had a few that went uh, longer and uh, that's because we're just, I think we're all starved for real English conversation. So I think we need to have some sort of um, um, exercise. Um, if it's on Zoom, that's fine. And if it's another thing, that's fine too. But we're gonna do something, I promise, um, that's more active. I don't wanna set it up now because again, we just did our midterms, so everybody wants a break probably. But um, before the end of the month, we've got to do a presentation and a, something else um, involving you speaking, um, which, which will help you practice and help you develop your speaking skills. Okay, so don't be afraid to, you know, read out loud. Like I'm reading out loud now, you know, I'm not crazy. I'm reading to you, but there's nobody here, actually. I'm just reading to my phone. So you can read to your phone too, or your mirror, or the window, or your, your pet dog, it doesn't matter. Um, I know you wouldn't normally do it, but these are strange times and you don't get to your two hours in class to um, speak anyway. And even if you were in class, like some students end up talking a lot and some students are uh, less active and less vocal. So if you can, you know, get in the habit of practicing your pronunciation and just reading examples of writing out loud, I know nobody likes doing that because that seems like an elementary school thing to do. Like re let's everybody read the book together, but we do it. We normally do it. I wouldn't read that. I would say, you know, who would, would somebody mind reading? Or I just pick somebody once I knew all your names. I don't know all your names because, you know, I'm more familiar with your student numbers, but I could just say, you know, so young, could you read number three on page 90? I would never read it myself in normal class. I would always have a student read it. So please don't, um, when you're doing review and when you're checking out the chapter and you're listening, you listen to me talk for like 25 minutes, you gotta do a little bit of homework anyway. I'm not assigning homework, but to, to get yourself familiar with the topic, read some of the paragraphs that we would normally read, like I read to you, and read the sentences and look at the grammar you know, descriptions and you know, do some self-study and you know, read out loud when you're doing it. Practice reading out loud. It's good for you. Okay. <clears throat> That's my pep talk, okay? Um, <clears throat> pep talk means to give you energy and encourage you. Um, now, what language do you use to explain how to do something? Um, well, you can, use the, you can use the word by, like this, by, how, right? The answer to how is by doing this. So... Make the spit, for example, make this disc spin by pulling the strings. Make the car start by turning the key, right? Open the door by turning the knob, okay? Check the time by looking at the clock. All right. Um, <clears throat> so you can also say, you can also link things so that they're connected by so, and that's giving a reason for something. Loops should be short enough so that you can easily hold the device, right? Your hockey stick should be held tightly so that when you take a shot, you don't drop the stick. And then you can use, <clears throat> for the first instruction and one following, the second instruction following an earlier instruction, once this is done, once this step is done, go on to step, step two, right? By the time you finish, sometimes there's are steps that are happening simultaneously. Um, by can also mean the, the end of something, right? Continuing to the next thing at the same time. So while this is happening, do this at the same time. By the time the pasta is done cooking, your sauce should be finished too. Okay? So you can use these connecting words in order to um, string together instructions and steps so that you can explain something better. So these words, so that, once you've done this, then do this, um, by, at the same time, while, simultaneous steps can happen too, 
right? You can do multitasking. Um, when you wanna describe these things, those are the types of words that you need to use. Um, there's another good example of a paragraph uh, to listen to on page 94. So rather than listening to it, you can use your digital access um, from your textbook. If you have an old textbook from somebody else, you won't be able to, um, but it does give you some more linking words at the top of page 94. It says, then, next, after, last, finally. These are all words that you use when there's an order. These are the words that I usually say in essays. Don't say first, second, third, fourth, fifth, then, next, last, because that's not how they're linked. They're not linked in order. It's not happening one after the other. These are logically connected, so don't use those words when you're writing. But when you're talking, unless you're talking about a process, but if you're writing an essay, it's not in order, unless it's a process you know, that you're writing about, because that's possible. It could be a science paper, which does have a process, and it does have to be followed you know, in certain steps. But if you're making a logical argument and you're writing a topical essay, and you're building an argument that doesn't have an order, then you don't say first, second, third, fourth, then last. Okay, this is when you use those words because there is an order and the order is important. Okay, so that's an easy way to start and that's an easy way to link uh, your steps and your instructions to each other. Now, um, you can read to yourself out loud if you wouldn't mind. There's no way of me checking, but I hope you do this. Um, read page 94, how to make a fire without matches. Okay, and that is all for today. Uh, next week, we'll talk about presentations, and I'll figure out what our speaking exercise is going to be, and I'll let you know about that by next week. Uh, sometime this week, you'll get um, your evaluations from your midterm, okay? And then we'll be all caught up. Thank you for listening, and uh, have a great, well, there's not much left of the weekend. Have a great Sunday.